how to give yourself love. If there were three words that could sum up all of the advice in the self-help and personal development world, it would probably sound like love yourself first. But what does that practically mean? Well, that is what we're going to talk about in this segment. So upon arriving to the world of self-help and personal development, a lot of us get there by way of a difficult romantic relationship, painful childhood experiences. Sometimes it's career confusion or burnout. Maybe you have health concerns and a host of other difficult circumstances in your life or all of them mixed together, right? And so at this stage of the game, we've kind of stopped trying to satisfy a feeling simply because we are having it. And instead we start taking a pause to reflect upon why we might be feeling that way. And it really is that simple question, why, that can often send you in a completely different direction in life, preferably one that you would rather be taking, right? Now for members of my online community, the motivation usually stems from love. Love rejected, love lost, love unrequited, and sometimes even smothering love. And so one of the first things we learn is that the love you experience between you and a partner is often a reflection of the love that exists between you and you. So John Bradshaw introduced a popular and a helpful way of thinking about this, which is learning to love yourself by loving your wounded inner child. Now, internal family systems theory built upon this concept by introducing the idea that not only do you have a wounded inner child, okay, but you also have other characters living in your con unconscious mind that protect and manage how well you can access that child. So in this segment, we're going to explore, number one, a definition for the wounded inner child, um, an explanation as to why it is often difficult to access that inner child um, through internal family systems theory. And we are going to do an experiential art therapy exercise together to help you connect with that wounded inner child or to another part that you need to connect with, right? Which is going to help you learn how to love yourself better, okay? So ideally, by the end of this segment, you will have gained clarity around the source of the inner conflict and insecurity you may be feeling and have a creative and practical tool to take with you so you can start genuinely practicing um, self-love. Okay. So if you haven't, if you don't have it with you, be sure to grab some drawing utensils and a piece of paper and stick with me until the end. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brianna McWilliam and I am a licensed and board certified creative arts therapist, author, and educator with more than 15 years in the field, helping adults struggling with insecure attachment go from self-doubting to self-sovereign so they can attract those soul-shaking passionate partnerships that they want without having to talk in circles around their feelings for hours or even years on end with no tangible result. And I do this using a psycho-spiritual approach to creative arts interventions using the McWilliam Method. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a clip of a live stream event that took place inside my private Facebook groups, which people can access once they've purchased one of my online courses. If you're interested in finding out if you might have insecure attachment, Check out the link in the caption of this video. You'll be able to take an easy four question quiz and find out your attachment style plus a detailed explanation. Now, if you like what you see in here and you haven't yet, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put up videos once or twice a week, and sometimes I will do occasional live streams through my YouTube channel, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So let's just start with our definition for the wounded inner child. So the wounded inner child is basically a constellation of thoughts, feelings, experiences, ego defenses, and psychic energy that exists as what I'm going to refer to as like a character um, or a sub-personality in your mind. And so the term and the concept of the wounded inner child, as I mentioned before, was introduced by John Bradshaw. And he actually believed that you could harbor multiple wounded inner children um, within you, an inner child for every phase of development from infancy all the way up to young adulthood. Okay. So these children split off from your conscious mind and your awareness when they are repeatedly dismissed, bullied, rejected, traumatized, ostracized, or otherwise mistreated and told that they're unacceptable in some way. 
And the anxiety that those experiences create, they stimulate kind of a jolt, okay, that tells the unconscious mind that those parts don't belong. And so they get buried into the unconscious in what's sometimes called the shadow self or the unknown aspects of the self. But those split off aspects of yourself, they still exist energetically and they have needs and they have wants and they have desires and they have fears and they have anxieties. And most of all, they want you to recognize and to care about them. But because we often don't know or believe that they're there, instead, because they can't get your attention that way, then they start getting their needs met by pulling, pulling your strings from behind the curtain. So for example, um, I'm going to use, I'm just going to pull a name out of the air. I'm going to say Tim. Okay. So for example, maybe Tim and his inner child or children are all in agreement that he wants love in his life. So he meets someone new and he gets into a relationship. But when Tim was younger, he learned that to be safe in love, you have to make yourself scarce and not need too much because his parents were stressed out all the time and they made him feel like he was a burden to them. So in his adult relationships, when his partner becomes emotionally upset about something or requires something of him, instead of hashing it out with them, he makes himself scarce so as not to be a burden to, to them because he assumes he must be the problem. Then his partner gets fed up and ends the relationship and Tim can't understand why. Now in this case, it would be Tim's wounded inner child compelling his responses to conflict and love. And because he's so identified with the feelings and the emotions in the perspective of that younger version of himself, when his inner child is stimulated, he's not able to differentiate its influence from the resources his more mature and sophisticated adult mind is capable of applying in this situation. So for example, maybe at work, logically, Tim can look at a problem, assess all of his resources, address conflicts directly with his coworkers using that mental maturity and resourcefulness, right? But when it comes to his love life, he turns into this shrinking violet and makes himself scarce. So these those resources disappear because love is an aspect of life that triggers the wounded inner child to take over. So learning to integrate the inner child, however, it leads to increased emotional maturity as well as expanded mental maturity. And what does that look like? So for example, um, Tim's inner child carries powerful uh, emotional energy and it compels him to think the following, right? He's a powerful feeling in his body and all of a sudden the, the, the mind has to make sense of those feelings and so it puts these thought forms together. I'm such a failure. I'm such a burden. Nobody loves me for who I am. I have to earn my way or stay out of people's way. People think I'm a burden and they reject me. I'm not wanted. If someone is unhappy, it's my fault and I should just leave them alone. I ruin everything, right? But if Tim could create some spaciousness around the feelings and the emotional energy that is stimulated, that has stimulated these thoughts, then he might be able to employ his more objective, conscientious adult perspective. And maybe that sounds more like this. I'm very successful and fully capable of contributing to any relationship that I commit myself to. My partner wants me in their life, and they frequently extend invitations for me to participate in their enjoyment and in their pleasure. When my partner expresses upset feelings, it's because they are wanting to connect with me again, and they are trying to teach me in their own way how to do that with them effectively. If I can sit with the discomfort long enough, I'm fully capable of finding co-creative solutions, one that can actually deepen our intimacy and our connection. Okay. So to arrive at this level of awareness and truly begin to integrate these different aspects of the self, we need to connect with and reclaim the aspects of the self, okay? Or at least be aware of them and understand how they're moving in and out of our awareness. Now we all have an inner, I'm going to refer to the inner child collectively. We all have an inner child, but many adults struggle to love their wounded inner child because of emotional neglect that they experienced as children or some kind of, you know, dismissal or disavowal or abuse. And as a result, they don't know where to begin because they don't have a model for it. So it can be really hard to connect with your wounded inner child, even if you want to. So what does this look like? Well, sometimes 
Maybe they fall asleep when they're trying to do a guided visualization to talk to their inner child, or maybe their eyes constantly pop open and, or they, they always need to get up and go to the bathroom repeatedly, or maybe they sit down to do a journal entry and try and talk to their inner child that way. And then they're just assaulted by a string of negative thoughts and a pessimistic attitude. Oh, this is so stupid. Why am I even bothering? Right. Or perhaps they try to do an art activity like you might try to do in, in, in my online courses as a way to playfully approach the inner child. But then suddenly there's a shortness of breath and sweaty palms and your heart is racing and there doesn't seem to be any real physical reason for it. Or maybe they are able to engage with activities like this, but what they discover is that their inner child doesn't want to talk to them. <laughs> so what do we do if that happens? So for these folks, internal family systems theory, I think, offers some answers. One, one of the main tenets of uh, internal family systems theory is that we are all made up of these different parts or these subpersonalities. Okay. This is not some, this is not the same as dissociative identity disorder, which is when you have multiple personalities. Instead, it's one personality with various contributing voices. Okay. Um, if you could think of the Disney movie Inside Out, it's kind of like that. Okay. And these parts can be thought of as many versions of ourselves that exist at different developmental stages and they have different functions. So these parts in IFS are basically divided into three categories, which is exiles, managers, and firefighters. So your wounded inner child is likely to be considered an exile. So it's a part of yourself that has been exiled from your conscious awareness. Okay. Because it triggers a painful or, or uncomfortable feeling. A manager is then put in charge of keeping it that way. So the manager is kind of like a protector. It's a part of you that is likely expressed as the inner critic, however. Okay. Um, now, now a firefighter does just what it sounds like. It puts out fires when an exile or an inner child occasionally escapes the manager. Okay. So for example, when Tim's partner expresses a need in the relationship, his inner child immediately feels anxiety because he's determined that he must be the burden to them, right? So then the manager kicks in to reduce feelings of anxiety by convincing Tim that the only solution is to take space from that partner because he is the problem, okay? But when this solution only makes the problem worse and Tim's partner breaks up with him, now the inner child has escaped the manager and feels tremendous shame, guilt, and defeat. So then the firefighter jumps into action. Hey, you don't need to feel these bad feelings. Instead, go drinking with your buddies and spend the night swiping on Tinder, right? The best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else, okay? And so the uncomfortable feelings that the inner child is stimulating, they get dismissed, numbed out, ignored. In other words, it's pushed back down. The fire is put out and, and the exile is unable to fully express itself until Tim meets somebody new and starts pulling the strings behind the scenes again, right? Now, hoping that this time, maybe Tim will listen to me and maybe learn a different way to process the painful feelings when and if they come up again, so that that inner child can become more integrated into the mental and emotional maturity he seeks. So basically, in order to heal the wounded inner child, we need to understand how these different parts of ourselves function and interact with each other. So if you're having trouble connecting with your inner child directly, it may be that you need to talk to a manager first, okay? And that is what our activity is gonna help you do next. So this is where you wanna gather your, your pens and your paper. And I'm gonna pull mine up here too so that we can do this together. All right, let's see if I can get this so you can see it well enough. That's probably good. Okay. Love me some giant post-its. All right. I'm going to use markers because markers are very saturated color and easy for you to pick up on the screen. Maybe I can move my, my light so it's on the paper a little bit more. Okay. And um, we're going to do a little activity here. I'm going to do a bilateral scrib scribble drawing. Bilateral scribble drawings are this, the way I, the way I do them, is inspired by Winnicott who was a child, um, was a physician and also um, child analyst. And um, the bilateral part is inspired by a study I read about the integration of art therapy approaches with EMDR protocols. Basically, it's the idea that 
if you make big movements and you're crossing your hands across the midline of your body, you are working towards integrating the two parts of your brain, which will help you integrate the material you're working with. Okay. So I'm going to take a drawing utensil, one in each hand. I'm going to do green and purple, complementary colors. And I'm just going to scribble. I'm just going to scribble on the page. I'm going to be crossing the midline of my body until it feels good to stop. I will say, um, if at any point you are feeling overstimulated or you you you're not you don't want to participate in this anymore, you feel uncomfortable, just stop. Right? Just stop and observe. You don't have to participate anymore. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take one in each hand. I'm just going to scribble. Do this along with me if you'd like. So I'm at an angle, so it's a little bit harder to get my midline, but you see what I'm doing. So that's my scribble. And once you've got the scribble down, I would recommend, there's a couple ways you can do this. For today's exercise, I'm going to recommend looking for a recognizable shape in the scribble in the same way that you might look for a recognizable shape in the clouds, right? The way you play the game, oh, that cloud looks like a cat, that, you know, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take a look at mine. Nothing immediately stands out to me, but sometimes if I just start following a line and I just see where the line takes me, something emerges. You come to a new juncture and then you have to decide, am I going to go right or left? You make a decision and you just sort of let it be an unconscious one. So now I, now something's kind of popping up in my awareness. So for me, I see this like half a face. So, of course, I'm left wondering, well, what's the other half? What's going on over here, right? Now, there's a lot of different things you can do. You might say, I want to flesh out the other half, or, or maybe you come up with a different type of figure. If you want to type there in the chat box what you see in your scribble, um, just type it there in, in, the, in the comments. Um, maybe you're wondering, like, whatever comes up for you, like, what environment does it exist in? What friends does it have? What's the weather like there, you know? All of those things you can continue to explore creatively. That's one direction to go in. For today, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. So at this point, I would encourage you to think about a dominant and a non-dominant dialogue. So what does that mean? So I'm going to have, I'm going to offer you some standard questions that you can write, but of course, you can also allow your, um, your own questions to emerge. These are just the ones I'm going to offer here as a template. So I get this far, okay? So I could ask my own questions like, where's the other side of, where's the other side of the face? Or I could just start with the standard template. I'm gonna give you a template for today. So I'm just gonna write, first one I'm gonna say is, um, who are you, what is your name? So I'm writing this with my dominant hand. So I'm gonna switch. And actually I like to switch colors also when I do this just cause visually it's um, helpful to me. So I'm gonna switch hands. This is my left is my non-dominant writing hand. So I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to answer. And I'm going to try to suspend as much of my thinking mind as possible and just allow my hand to kind of like not know the answers until my hand is moving. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so the response I got was, who are you? Stuffed up and sad, doesn't want to work you. <laughs> so basically, I'm the stuffed up and sad and doesn't want to work part of you. My name is underneath the go-getter. <laughs> so... I've been kind of sick the past week and there's a part of me clearly that is stuffed up and doesn't want to work. <laughs> and then there's another part of me, which is the go-getter. That's like, heck no, we're going to do this live stream and we're going to stay on point. So then the next question you might ask is, um, you know, how old are you? What do you want? How old are you? Ageless. What do you want? Recognition, gifts, and obedience. So you could continue riffing off the dialogue. I could ask, what gifts do you want? Um, what recognition do you need? What do you mean by obedience, right? Um, one thing that I would ask is I might just make it broader than that, and I might say, how can I provide that for you? Incidentally, in asking these questions and following through, that is reparenting the inner child. That's, that's the act of parenting your inner child. So I've been doing this enough that once I get going with my non-dominant, I can just switch to my dominant and I just write it out faster. But um, it helps to start with the non-dominant to begin with. What came through was um, stop before exhaustion, eat well, 
drink tea, sleep more, and trust the go-getter. So I think that, you know, I can go on about what that might mean for me in my own personal experience, but mostly this is just to demonstrate for you how do you love yourself? Well, you get in touch with the parts of yourself that are in operation within you and you communicate to them about what are your needs? How can I serve you? How can I be a parent to you? How can I express love to you um, in the ways that you need, right? So the point I want to make with this is that you are the highest authority on this, okay? I, I mean, you can look out into the world on Instagram and self-help and personal development books, and there can be lots of recommendations of things you can try and absolutely try those things. But notice what is your inner response to them? How are you responding to them? Is it a yes or is it a no? Is it a, a high vibe resonant feeling or is it not? So the recommendations are fantastic, but it's the inner response that is the wisdom on the matter, the final word on the matter, right? And this is just a tool that you can take with you to become aware of um, what is my final word on the matter. So in summary, what is the inner child? The inner child is basically like a character, a sub-personality, an aspect of you that lives behind the curtain um, in your unconscious mind. And it is a part of you that was likely split off for whatever reason because it was dismissed or deemed unacceptable in your experience. And so when you have trouble accessing that inner child, it's usually because the voice that determined that it was unacceptable created another character or part within you, which we might refer to as a manager, according to internal family systems theory. And that voice thinks that it has to keep you in line in order to protect you. So you might experience it like an inner critic, for example. When that, but when things in life become um, tumultuous or, or conflicted or difficult and that inner child busts out anyway because those are the coping skills that you know how to use in that moment. That's when the firefighters come in, put out the fires and they try to save you from that feeling, put the inner child back in its place. And this is when we might numb out or look for ways to avoid a feeling rather than letting ourselves feel it, aka integrate that inner child. Okay. So the tools that I wanted to share with you here today is just one way that you can start to have that conversation with your self parts. Maybe it's an inner child that came through. I guess this, this would be. So this is an example of an exile, right? The inner child is the exile. This would be an example of an exile. And the exile is telling me the go-getter, who's probably a manager in my experience, is bearing down on, on them. And they're like, you need to you need to hop to with sleeping better, stopping before you're exhausted, drinking tea, and trusting that you know what you're doing, right? That seems to be the wisdom that I'm receiving. <coughs> so loving myself and then taking action on that and reparenting that is doing that, right? Just making a commitment to do it. And as I'm talking, my nose is getting stuffier. <laughs> so how's that for an affirmation? Um, but so this is a practice that I hope you enjoy that you're able to, um, to utilize effectively. And again, if you feel like you go too deep with it, just pull back. It's not intended to make you uncomfortable. It's just intended to help you push up, right up against the edges of your comfort zone because that is where change happens, not situated right in the middle of it and at all the way outside of it, right? Right up against the edges of it. And that's where the best growth happens, okay? So again, if you liked this particular segment, if you feel like this this would be a helpful, useful tool for you, useful information for you, just let me know there in the chat or in the comments. I'd love to see um, your feedback. <laughs>